Hey, my name is Frederick and in this video tutorial I will explain how you can make design changes to ODM product and ODM is basically a different term for private label product or factory product or well any product that is already existing okay so in this video I will explain how you can change logos prints like artworks and so on colors materials components and last design so we've got a lot of cover in this video okay so say that you want to change out the logo or well you want to add a logo you may want to get your artwork printed or a pattern or well whatever then basically any supplier can do this for you they don't need any special capabilities uh, every factory can get a logo printed it costs a few cents so it's not a cost issue but you have to provide them with the data they need to get it right. It's a print type. Do you want an engraving? Maybe a screen print? Okay. Color. You need to provide a Pantone. You don't say blue because you have like hundreds of different of blue. You need to be more specific than that. And that, that's why in, in, in industry we use Pantones. And then you need to provide a position centered. Okay. Otherwise they may decide to print this logo elsewhere and that's not good dimensions how what's what's the height what's the width of, of this logo or artwork or whatever the graphics it may be so what you see is that you have to be very specific when you deal with factories because otherwise they will fill in the blanks for you and if they do and you didn't tell them what to do then there's nothing that you can do about that okay um, let's go to the next one colors uh, this applies to plastics, to, to fabrics, and other textiles, and to metallics. So when it comes to fabrics or plastics, uh, we use Pantones or RAL colors, two different color systems. Okay, this means that you need to provide uh, a Pantone, a Pantone color code like Pantone 4. 420C blue for example and this means that your supplier knows exactly which one to go for so this is a system that well basically uh, everyone, everyone in manufacturing is referring to some suppliers use uh, RAL I don't know why but it's quite rare okay uh, then when it comes to stainless steel zinc alloy and so on and so on um, you don't refer to Pantones unless you are coating it with a spray paint or oil paint or something but when you actually IP plating means that you you're using an electroplating process to shoot a layer uh, to add a layer of say gold to a stainless steel uh, component and and yeah that makes it look like it's golden which technically it is um, it's used for watches and so on and um, this comes with limitations because uh, metallics can't be colored in well there are there are limits to the colors you can choose when it comes to IP plating and you got gold rose gold black and blue I think there may be one or two more options there may be more high-tech plating options but this is from the perspective of the average Shenzhen manufacturer and not whatever Apple can do because that doesn't really apply to well my audience here on YouTube right so you have a few different color customization options and as I said every factory can offer customization uh, it, it comes down to you providing them with this information All right then we have materials every product can be made in different materials and I give you a few examples here You've got a t-shirt you can make this in 100% cotton 100% organic cotton bamboo rayon fabric okay so three different options this is an extreme simplification just to demonstrate my point here in reality uh, this t-shirt can be made with well uh, hundreds of different fabrics it's, it's up to you to specify suppliers don't really tend to have like catalogs okay uh, wristwatches uh, we have zinc alloy 304 stainless steel and 316L stainless steel three options for example okay and then when it comes to uh, cloth hangers we have uh, yeah a few different wood types redwood pine and so on okay so it goes like this every supplier can offer different materials 
uh, depending on what they are working with, what they're specialized in, and what the sub suppliers can provide. Okay, and it's up to you to gain the base uh, basic understanding for the different material options uh, for your product. Your supplier will not really educate you, so it's up to you to uh, yeah do your research. Okay, but end of the day you can make uh, a selection and you have to communicate that to, to your supplier so you can pick different materials right components and then we have buttons and zippers fabric components wood and plastics and so on uh, you can choose movements CPUs electrical components this is just a mismatch for a bunch of different categories what I'm trying to show here is that uh, if you go, say, on Alibaba or Global Sources, and you find a uh, well a product listing, a listed product, that doesn't necessarily mean that they can only make it with that specific zipper or that specific CPU or that specific watch movement. You can customize, and it's up to you to specify. Okay, and now we are at product design so what you see here in in this in this tutorial is that you can actually customize a lot of things you can customize logos artwork uh, colors and so on but what about design and it really really comes down to the product category when it comes to say molded parts like stainless steel components or a plastic case uh, if you want to make any design change whatsoever then this means that you have to redesign uh, the injection mold, okay? So this also means that we're going into custom design territory. We're not making changes to an existing design anymore. Instead, you're creating, you're creating a new design, you're creating a new set of injection molds or other tooling, okay? It can be done, you need to ask for the CAD files, uh, but as I said, then we're not really customizing an existing product because that's what this video is about how to customize uh, the design of an existing product okay second we have textiles and leather and so on you don't need to buy a new injection mold but, but you, you may need to uh, you may need to provide uh, well you may need to pay for a new cutting tool for example so it doesn't come with our tooling um, it's fairly straightforward though, you can make changes to the supplier's pattern if they have it. Uh, but even then you're going into OEM territory. Last we have electronics and this is when it gets really complicated. You can't just make simple changes in an electronic product, it doesn't work like that. You can't just say, okay I want these and these functions sorted out. Uh, it's, it's a lot more complicated than that. Whenever you make a change you have to make an uh, update to the bill of materials, to the component list same thing uh, and, and to the PCB schematic and of course you have to consider compliance issues because you have very strict product safety regulations that apply to electronics so you can make design changes but the question is uh, are you making design changes to an existing product or are you making a new product from scratch and that also leads me directly to this question or well statement actually it's really worth the time and effort to, to, to make small design changes. I get a question all the time, uh, hey Frederick, we want to make a small design change to this power bank or this uh, uh, outdoor sofa, rattan furniture or whatever. And uh, it, it really makes sense to, to, to make these, well, so-called small design changes because they're not that small. Picture that you want to make a change, you, you want to change out say uh, you want to redesign a wristwatch and you want to base that on an existing design it doesn't make any sense anymore because you have to you have to make uh, you have to redesign uh, the product from scratch you have to well you have to deal with components that don't fit together due to the redesign and so on so it, it it's really worth the time uh, to rework an existing design, you can actually save time if you re if if you design a product from scratch. And then you have to consider the IP issues. When you see uh, a product listing, or you go to a trade show and you see a product, many of those products are demo products that the suppliers made.
for uh, other customers. This doesn't necessarily mean that you can just say, hey, uh, Mr. Supplier, I want to buy this product, I want, I want to buy this uh, electronic widget. Um, the supplier, in most cases, they don't own the IP, they don't have the patents, okay? And you can't just buy products, it doesn't work like that, okay? So, uh, just because the supplier made a product doesn't mean that they own the IP, right? So this is another thing to consider. Now, of course, it's not like every product can be patented. You can't patent a T-shirt. You can't, you can't patent a lot of products, but some products may have some kind of design protection. So it's something you have to be aware of. All right, then we have the injection molds or other tooling. It's the same thing. Now, you go on a watch supplier's website, and you see, okay, I like this one, I like that one, and I like this one. This, this, yeah, you pick out three different different watches and you get in touch with the supplier and, and, and you will find that they can't just go and make these products for you because these injection molds are paid for by existing customers and they will of course and they should not betray an existing uh, customer for the sake of winning new business you don't want them to do that with, with the injection molds that you've been paying for uh, the suppliers they don't really invest money into into making injection molds most most suppliers don't do that at least so you have to con you, you can't just go and say okay i want this product that i found on alibaba make it for me because uh, even if if they have made it they may not even ha they they may not own the injection mold and even if they store it they may not want to be willing to use it because they don't own it okay and then we come down to uh, a very exotic very exotic issue. That's that's fake product listing, and I'm not I'm not referring to fake products. I'm not uh, referring to to fake Gucci bags or fake Ray Bans here. I'm I'm referring to products that the suppliers never made. Okay, and that's another interesting uh, thing that you find on uh, a lot of these B2B supply directories. Suppliers to upload product listings with spec sheets and photos of products that they'd never ever manufactured. Okay. Instead, they want to show, okay, hey, I can make this product for you, okay? That's that's the point of uploading um, these product listings to, to, to attract you, right? They want to attract you, and they want you to go and look and say, wow, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So, for example, in the watch industry, a lot of suppliers, they, uh, they just upload renderings. And, I mean, it works, because what the point of having, you know... Uh, a page on say global sources is to attract attract buyers and buyers in turn they're attracted to these uh, product photos so uh, it it, it kind of works it's uh, like birds mating uh, the male has all these colors and instead the Alibaba global sources suppliers have these these product listings to just demonstrate I can make this for you so it doesn't mean that they sell fake products it's just that they upload photos or uh, renderings of products they never ever manufactured. And this means that you can't modify them because you have to redesign, you have to actually design them from scratch, okay? In some cases, the supplier just have this rendering. They may not even have the technical drawings. So where do you begin with that? Well, it means that you have to actually go and uh, design that product, create the spec sheets and so on. So, Making design changes to an existing product only work if all, all these four conditions are fulfilled. And first, you need to be willing to compromise heavily and base your design almost entirely on the ODM product. There's no point in taking an existing ODM product and, and make drastic changes to it, because that will be more complicated than actually re than designing a product from, 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 uh, from zero. Okay, and that's because uh, it takes the same amount of time, but also you have to deal with components that don't fit together anymore and so on. And I've been dealing with customers that have been trying this approach to get uh, to modify ODM products only to spend a lot more time doing so than it would have taken us to go directly uh, to the drawing board and work on an OEM product. Okay, B, the supplier doesn't have, the supplier must have the tooling in stock. Okay, they must have the tooling, and this means that they can't just upload an, uh, a rendering because then, then they don't have the tooling. And see, they must own the tooling. 
because if they don't own it they will not and should not use that injection mold for other customers okay of course some of them will but that's risky and that leads us to d the design is not patented or protected by another customer okay so it really depends on the industry in some industries such as well uh, kitchen utensils you can find a lot of suppliers that invest in their own design and so on so then it's 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 a viable way to approach suppliers and it's, it's a making design changes like adding a logo or plating and so on it can really work the same thing with say led light bulbs uh, you already have a lot of existing suppliers that develop their own products uh, but say in in fashion accessories or or textiles or say uh, watches it, it rarely works it just it just depends on the dynamics of that specific industry